Hello everyone, welcome to another Talking Geeky Stuff with me and today's video is about Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness My thoughts and my quick review So before we start and talk about this movie Spoiler alert, there will be spoilers So uh, I'm going to count down, 3, 2, 1, here we go So this movie, directed by Sam Raimi some people may remember he did the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man trilogy but of course I'm a, I actually remember him from the Evil Dead trilogy and he does a lot of horror films and this I think someone I think uh, Perry Nemiroff wrote it in a tweet said this is the closest Sam Remy uh, Sam Remy MCU movie you ever see and it's true um, I haven't seen the making of it, so I won't know. And but looking, judging by the movie, you can you can tell that Sam Raimi had a lot of fun, and I'm just happy that uh, Kevin Feige kind of gave him a lot of uh, free reigns to do his movies. So yeah, so um, that was good to see because there's a lot of touches of classic Sam Raimi horror movie. If you've ever seen his uh, Evil Dead, some of that is really good. And I know there's a few criticism before, like the trailer and lots of TV spots. And everybody, everybody thought he's spoiling too much with some of the secret char characters. And to be honest with me, to be honest with you guys, um, I don't mind being spoiled. I'm, I never, I'm not one of those people who know you can tell me the ending and surprise. It doesn't really bother me so much. And uh, and I think the spoilers or the the leaks of these characters to me it was a smaller part. Because, as I mentioned, I don't, get, I don't really care too much about spoilers. It's just when you watch the film, there was a lot of twists. I think when you watch the trailer, trailer two, and the TV spots, your mind starts to build a a story. You try to guess what the story is about. And to be honest, I got a lot of things wrong. For example, um, Wonder, the Scarlet Witch. Um, when you watch the trailers, you think that okay, it starts off like. Doctor Strange goes to her, asks for help. She kind of, on his side at first, sometime in the middle, she turns against him, and then she turns good and helps Doctor Strange beat the the main <clears throat> the main villain or something like that. And then he'd be thinking, talk to my friends. I wonder who the main villain is because that villain must be powerful enough to take on Doctor Strange, you know, Wong, Scarlet Witch. But when you first watched it, oh by the way, this film. When it starts, it starts. You know, it starts off with Doctor Strange with um, America Chavez, or I think that's her name, running in this kind of like uh, dimensional crazy world, running away from some sort of demon, and just literally hits you like that. Action scenes and something happens. Um, so the girl's powers; she has ability to to uh, travel through universes, and the demon are beginning trying to take her power. And Doctor Strange is trying to protect her, and then you know, and then Doctor Strange is losing to this demon, and Doctor Strange you know, tries to take the power for himself to save the multiverse, the big sacrifice, and and that's where kind of, but you know, when you watch it, this film now, after all these other versions, Doc, Doctor Strange, you understand that is Doctor Strange, Doctor Strange's character. He would sacrifice to save the universe to save the world that's what he's like so that's why he's one of those characters where you kind of like like but also hate him at the same time because he's not like a good 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 character like captain america where he would save everyone but dr strange would do would sacrifice people and then something happened dr strange in that universe dies and she acts you no know, she can't control her power only in in dangerous situations she opens a portal and it lands into um uh, 616 um, later on they tell you um, the universe that we saw used to is uh, universe 616 if you read comics you know what I mean so they know Doctor Strange wakes up and has a nightmare <laughs> one of the things I first saw when he wakes up and that after the nightmare was there was a Surface Pro this Surface Pro laptop or this, uh, tablet just by his bedside it's like I don't know how about you guys, but having a, <laughs> a Surface Pro on your bed 
immaculate, not even mood. <laughs> it's just proper product placement. Anyway, enough of that. So anyway, so he, he attends his um, uh, Christy, uh, Rachel McAdams uh, wedding. Of course, they didn't uh, hit off. She married another guy and sits there, you know, a little chat with her, say, oh, sorry, we couldn't get together and so on. And uh, she told him, you're the, it's your fault, I think. And you're like, you always like to hold a knife and so on, selfish kind of guy. And a typical doctor trained, he's one of those uh, guys who just, you know, he fired to sacrifice himself for the greater good and, but without knowing he's actually hurting people around him, that kind of person. So anyway, another commotion, um, commotion outside. He goes down there to check out what's happening and you see uh, this um, character, uh, another monster, like an octopus with a big eye. And this one, this design I didn't like because I don't know if there's a first scene that demon or the creature they were fighting was really well designed, I thought. And you watch the whole movie, all these other creatures, kind of ghostly creatures, demons, they were nice designs. I thought they were scary enough and so on. But this thing, like this design of an octopus with a big eye, it's really cartoony because um, the fight is so predictable. You know, the you know you're gonna have to kill it by stabbing the big eye and so on. So I felt that was a bit out of place because I know I felt that that design was designed by someone else or someone because the other design kind of looked a lot better. This one seems out of place. I didn't like that design. Anyway. The fight, I suppose, I suppose the fight had some comedy elements into it. it kind of remind me of um, Spider-Man 2 when he's fighting Dr. Octopus. Maybe it's, maybe a little reference there. You ever feel kind of comedic? Maybe there's, that's the reason behind that. And so, yeah, so Dr. Strange goes in, saves her, and then Wong, Wong comes up, helps Dr. Strange, and so on. And then they explain the story about the multiverse and this is happening, that's happening. And they found that it's no witchcraft. So Dr. Strange goes and sees uh, Wanda and uh, asks for help. And what I love about this bit is it literally wastes no time, you know, after the, the whole talk. And she mentions her name. She stops and says, oh, you never told me her name. And then suddenly the mirage or the illusion disappears and instead of like apple trees or kind of like almost like a scorched land, you know, a land that had been on fire. And she had this book coming with a book's called now. Speaking about books, there was a kind of two books, like the good book and a bad book kind of remind me of the book in Evil Dead. So you can, that is definitely inspired by um, Evil Dead and Sam Remy. He loves his books. And then she warns him, you know, you find that Wanda was the one who's sending demons after her. She, she wants the power. So if you watch uh, WandaVision, it kind of leads up to that. You know, she wants to go into another universe, take over, uh, you know, another version of self and have, you know, be with her kids. And yeah, speaking about um, Scarlet Witch, Wanda has always been one of my favorite characters in the, in the comics because she's her character is very really complex you know very really confused sometimes it's good good sometimes it's bad sometimes in between and she has a really she's very really powerful one of the most powerful was well mutants back then i think um i think she's uh, inhuman now <laughs> i'm not sure if um if she's inhuman or she they they made her mutant again that's in the comics and and I'm just glad that finally Marvel has actually made Wonder and showed how powerful she is. Because she's really, really powerful. She's up there. Um, in the comics, she goes toe to toe with the Phoenix Force. She can literally bend reality with, with a blink of an eye. So I'm really glad they focus on that power. And I think um, this movie was, as, as much as it's a Doctor Strange uh, movie, but I felt that um, Elizabeth Olsen, she really... I felt she stole the show in some parts because whenever she was on screen here, I was actually, uh, I was actually looking, I was captivated by her performance. You know, Scarlet Witch, her aura, you know, I actually enjoy watching her on screen more than Doctor Strange, you know. But anyway, and then she reviews a plan and bang, she goes, I'm giving you a warning. I'm going to go there. I'm going to take you all out. 
I've been nice to you guys. Now I'm going to show you. I'm not Wondermore. I'm Scarlet Witch. I am going to kick you all your, all your ass, if you, you know, all your asses if you don't you know, hand over the girl. And boom. And I was like, wow, okay, that was quick. Because I thought, like I said earlier on, I thought she was going to be, uh, you know, Doctor Strange's ally, then enemy, then go back to being an ally. Kind of that character. And there was like a another main villain. But she was actually the villain. And I thought, wow, this is great. And and then then she goes and invades that land, uh, comment which is called as the mystical land. You're getting prepared to fight her. And it just starts into boom. Just action, action, action is 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 really. I mean, one of my favorite genres in the movies is action adventure, and this definitely gives you that. And of course, horror. On the topic of horror, this is one of the probably the scariest MCU film I've seen um, because once, um, for example, when. One that goes in and takes out all of these um, sorcerers. People get people get done in, like their bodies get vaporized and put into a crisp. So it's actually quite—I don't want to say it's violent because you don't really see blood and so on—but it's actually quite scary in some scenes. And even though that in the UK it's a 12A in America, PG-13, but I don't know. I think I wouldn't take a kid who's under eight years old because I think this may be a bit too scary for some kids. But definitely check that out. I mean, you can definitely tell the horror elements you know, Sam Raimi brings to this film. Um, so anyway, moving on, then, you know, then um, they have a fire and the girl transform them to another universe where they meet the, the Illuminati's. Illuminati's. I was, and uh, that's where you see all the, the special cast, uh, the lead cast. You've got um, Professor X, Mr. Fantastic, um, Black Bolt. Captain Marvel and Captain Carter. I would like to have changed it, but I would love to see have seen Namor in there. To be honest, because in the original comic, he's I think he's part of the Illuminati. Um, Black Bolt. It's great to see Black Bolt. Um, I know the Inhuman TV show really flopped. To be honest with you, it was that it was crap. I mean, I didn't finish it. It was that bad. But I'm glad that Marvel kept the actor. I like the actor. Um, shame because I didn't like um, Black Bolt's uniform. His suit was a bit uh, mere to it. But anyway, uh, it's great to see uh, Professor X back. And uh, when they showed you Professor X, a nice little um, music uh, from the animated series. Speaking of that music, Danny Elfman came back. Um, him and Sam Raimi worked together most of the time, so it's great to hear his, his uh, music again. And then. Um, uh, Wanda kind of controls the other Wanda in that universe to take out everyone. And that seems really good. Um, the way she's walking and she covered, I thought it was blood on the trailer, but it's actually oil or grease from the robots around them. And the way she takes them all out, it's funny how she takes out the, the male characters first. And, and, you know, she has a good fight with Captain Marvel and Captain, um, Captain Carter. So it takes out Black Belt easy, takes out Mr. Fantastic pretty easy. But hey, but it's a good fight. And then once he takes them all out, and I love the way, speaking about taking out characters, I love the way she took out Professor Xavier. I mean, it was a shame that he had to go. You know, Professor X um, went into Wanda's mind, trying to save this version of Wanda. But in the background, you see like a red mist comes in and she just maybe jump me just comes out and snaps his neck and it kind of had like a zombie or demon look to it that was quite scary and then you know they run in or running away and the way and then that universe wonder had like a limp she had a damaged leg and the way she's walking is almost like like a horror movie and that scene was amazing i did like her so this film is about just a little over two hours and i actually wanted it to be maybe a bit longer maybe another 10 maybe 15 minutes longer because some films have pacing issues, like they're too slow, right, for example. But this one was a little bit too fast because once it goes, it goes. There's small little segments, maybe a minute or two, three minutes here and there, for the characters to chat and talk and build a story. But it's like action a little bit here, then action a little bit here, action a little bit here. And you know, I love action movies, really, but I felt this film could have been a little bit longer so they can spread it out a little bit and have those 
moments, you know, human contact, you know. I love the interaction with Doctor Strange and um, Christy, Christy, um, uh, Rachel McAdams' character, and talked about how they, you know, why they didn't work. I like those moments. I, I wanted those moments to be a bit longer. And for example, even the beginning sequences, uh, when Doctor Strange is saving her uh, uh, America, American Chavez, uh, I forgot the names already, saving her, how did she end up in that universe? And how did Doctor Strange find this out? And so on. And speaking about that Doctor Strange in the beginning sequences, uh, he dies, of course, and then they see the body in uh, 616 and he buries that Doctor Strange. In the trailer, you see like a zombie Doctor Strange and with all these hands and whatever, right, in the background. In the trailer, I thought that was a uh, villain who's going to attack Doctor Strange. But again, I got it wrong because Doctor Strange controls that Doctor Strange because he's in a different universe now. And Doctor Strange would have died. And he, Doctor Strange even said that he, he doesn't have to be alive. So he takes over the dead body from of Doctor Strange from the beginning scene and it's kind of like a zombie Doctor Strange and all these kind of spirits come out and I love the way he gets to control them and use them as wings and it's very Sam Raimi, it's very dark and I loved it. And yes, one criticism I felt they could have spread out a bit more and I'll give it time to breathe some of the, the scenes to build the story up for example, you know, maybe another 10-15 minutes longer I felt could have benefited, uh, benefit this film. But anyway, and then he carries on and yeah, he fights one of himself with the three eyes. And that was a great scene as well. And what I liked about the ending, um, like I said, um, I think um, this really showed off uh, Scarlet Witch. I really, like I said, I think she's one of the best characters. I'm so glad they really um, made her as, you know, as a star. I mean, this could be a, you can call it wonder in the multiverse of madness and you can say this is her film i think like i said i think she stole the show uh, in this film and there's love because also you know like when i watch movies i tend to kind of do a lot of predictions where i'm watching it. this is going to happen that's going to happen and of course i got a lot of things wrong by looking at the trailer but, but i knew that um no one could stop her because she's that powerful and the only one who can stop her is herself you know and that's why I love the bit um, when they teleported to that universe that she wanted to be in. And um, it was the kids that stopped her, finally see, you know, she uses this word, I'm not a monster. And then he kind of comes back and haunts her. And, you know, she, and she starts, you know, the realisation that she become a monster in front of her kids. And she didn't want, she didn't want that to be. And it was her that stopped herself. So no one really beat her except for her own conscience, her own heart, for example. So there's some redeeming qualities about her at the end and, you know, sacrifice herself. But I don't think she's gone. You know, comic characters never stay gone. So anyway, so it ends like that. So I really like that ending as well. What else is it? Also, when you watch a Sam Remy, Sam Remy movie, there's two things you've got to expect. Uh, Bruce Campbell and his car, his yellow car. And you see Bruce Campbell and you see the yellow car. It's amazing. Definitely check that out. Wait to the end as well. You see, you get two end credits, mid, mid end credit and right at the end. Um, I won't tell you that. Definitely watch yourself. That, but the end end credit, <laughs> so funny. It reminded me of Captain America in the first um, Spider-Man movie, um, Far From Home. Or what is it, Far From Home or the first Spider-Man movie? It reminds me of that one with the Captain America credit. That was really funny. Um, again, at the end of the credits, it says Doctor Strange will return. And Doctor Strange is one of the characters, you know, he can return. It doesn't have to be his movie. Just like the comics, he appears in all of the Marvel comics. He's one of those characters where he fits in everything now. The way that Marvel made him, he fits in everything. So yeah, overall, I liked this movie. I mean, I've read a lot of critics, you know, sometimes people came in here, they were suspecting this kind of style of Doctor Strange, but they got this. I was actually pleasantly surprised how it kind of the, well, 60%, 65% of this movie become a horror movie. 
you know, almost like a Terminator movie, how Scarlet Witch was just hunting them down and how powerful she is, this unstoppable force. And I like that change. I know a lot of people were suspecting something else, and but I enjoyed it. Yes, the pacing issues, I felt it was a bit too fast in some areas. They could have slowed it down a bit. I'm all for that. That's one of the criticism. And of course, the criticism I had earlier about the creature that showed up with the big eyes and eight tentacles, I think feel, that felt in place. But overall, I liked it. Um, I want to see more. I wanted to see more, of course. Like I said, another 15 minutes. But I understand some of the criticism out there is a bit jumbled up, but I enjoyed it. Like I said, I think Sam Raimi's back. I'm a big fan of Sam, Raimi, Sam Raimi's movie and look forward to more Doctor Strange. So I actually really enjoyed it and I preferred it more, prefer this more than the first movie. But anyway, please go check it out. And thanks for watching and please subscribe for more Talking Geeky stuff. Until next time, good morning, good afternoon. And good evening, wherever you are in the world. Goodbye.